HBCU Digest, welcome back to our presidential leadership series. Today, we have distinguished guests of, of the, the very rare variety here on the Digest, a current and former president of one of our esteemed historically black colleges, Tougaloo College President, Dr. Carmen J. Walters, and former president, Dr. Beverly Wade Hogan. Uh, they announced uh, last week uh, a very, very important gift to the institution, uh, $4 million, the largest in school history from an individual donor. Um, and this will go to the establishment and endowment of Dr. Hogan's scholarship fund. And so what a pleasure it is to, to one, have two uh, ladies running the show. Uh, we know HBCUs are so much better ran, <laughs> so, much, so, strong, so much stronger when women are in charge. Uh, and, and what a pleasure it is to, to see uh, live and in person the transition of effective leadership from one hand to another. So uh, sisters, I, I definitely appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Walters, we will begin uh, with you um, because you're you're sitting in the chair um, mm -hmm. with a four million dollar gift. Talk about the 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 concept in a season of giving to HBCUs. Just how transformative this is for Tougaloo. Um, and, and what do you think it does to to add or change the conversation about certain HBCUs always get all of the money? Um, yeah. this, this, is a, this is a big gift uh, to, a, to a school that is as a powerhouse in its own right, but usually isn't in that orbit of other schools that get accused of getting all the money. Absolutely. Uh, we all know the story of who's getting what. And this is so special for Tougaloo. To me, it says for sure, Tougaloo is worth the investment. Um, having this honor uh, in, you know, for Dr. Hogan means so much. As the first leader, she's made history as the first uh, president, female president. And now she's making history with the first, uh, the, the first to have this large gift in her honor. So it means a lot to us, and I can't even put it into words. You know, our students, for those students who are uh, need uh, that 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 gap, we call it. You know, you're trying to fill uh, a, an unmet need for a student. This is going to go a long way for our scholars, and we are just grateful. And I can't think of a better person uh, to have this honor bestowed upon her for her labor and the love she's shown to Tougaloo as a, an alum and as a leader, as a president, as a leader in the community. It speaks volumes. And so we're excited. We couldn't wait to make the announcement um, to let everyone know that, that this is happening right here at Tougaloo in a little place called Tougaloo, Mississippi. <laughs> Dr. Hogan, talk about the um the relationship between yourself and the donors uh, to this gift, because that, that 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 is an important thing that we always try to emphasize in, in profiles like this is that gifts like this don't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. And they don't call up and say, let me give you all four million dollars. This is a, this is a relationship that's been built on other gifts that have happened over the years and a relationship that you established with this particular couple. Can you talk about how that relationship got started and how you build to this kind of, I would say, transformative level gift. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, you know, Dr. George Wallace and his wife, Dr. Julie Luss, have been friends of the college for a long, long time. I, I met them when I first joined the uh, institution as an administrator. He had been giving to the college and there was a lapse in there. And I was uh, organizing the Health and Wellness Center at that time and was looking for people who were friends of the college. And so I called George to see, to introduce myself and to see how how long they've been giving and why the lapse. And we talked for a while. And then, but George's friendship with the college uh, came from the Brown Tugaloo Partnership. He's been involved with Tugaloo since that partnership was formed back in 1964. He graduated from Brown in 1951. So we met and just struck up a friendship and he would come down to the college as part of the Brown Tougaloo Partnership, and he was a sustained donor to the college every year uh, and substantially. So when I retired, he and Julie called me and said that they wanted to do something to honor my legacy. And we talked about the need for scholarships and what they would mean for Tougaloo College and attracting and entertaining students and helping students to go through college and complete successfully without interruption, because 
financial assistance is very important to the students we serve. I didn't know what level George was talking about because he's he said Tugalu is in his will, talked about that. And I told him that he said, where can I start? And I said, with the new president and her <laughs> vice president for uh, <laughs> institutional advancement. I said, All, everything's in order. You just have to tell them what you want to do. And, and um, so they did. They He worked with them. And then Dr. Walters called me back in June to tell me that George had and Julie had submitted their first payment of a mm. $4 million dollar, uh, <laughs> gift to um, in, to uh, establish the Hogan Scholars in and we talked about the importance of, <clears throat> she talked, she mentioned the importance of establishing this and maybe putting it into endowment that would most impact the college. And my response was, you know, I'm proud of this gift. I'm proud of what it means to Tougaloo College, but what, however you can, you arrange it so that it can have the best impact on Tougaloo College's bottom line and can serve Tougaloo College in perpetuity. We were all in agreement with that. So we worked on that and worked up the, criteria for that relationship, uh, for that in endowment. But yes, uh, George and I probably talked a couple of, several times uh, in a year, just about different things, issues of the world, world affairs, the relationship between Brown and Tougaloo, you name it. He's a he's an astronomer as is, is his wife. And because he had made so many contributions, both from a sci but in the scientific community and as from as a humanitarian, we honored him by bestowing on Papa Ham the honorary doctorate in science. And because he, he was deserving of that and got to know him even better then. But, you know, just along the line, I'd always zip him a note during the year to see how they're doing uh, and kept in touch with him and kept him involved with Tougaloo College. Uh, and they are the type of people who have invested in many spectrums of our lives in terms of uh, whether it's the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, but they're interested in helping to build a better world for all people and to help America's playing field become a little bit more level. I often say about them is that they have lived their professional lives using the telescopic lens to view the universe from many angles. Mm -hmm. But what most impressed me is they use their lens of humanity to see how they can have an impact on helping us to create a better world that's inclusive, that's kind, that's fair, that's equitable. And that's why I applaud them and I say that they are the real celebrated heroes in this story because without them and without uh, their interest in their love for Tougaloo College, uh, notwithstanding a relationship I had built with them, but the love for Tougaloo College, and that's what must continue, is how people believe in our institutions, see them as worth worthy of investment, and, and, and we tell our story and they can see that. They can see the products that come out of these institutions, in particular Tougaloo College, and George and Julie had been able to witness that and the emphasis that we were plant, putting on how we actually educate our students for success in life, that they will be able to make that mark on a larger world and through leadership and service and all those kinds of um, expanded learning opportunities that Tougaloo College is very good at providing its students. I was gonna say, let's back up and talk about that because a lot of people don't know about the partnerships between Tougaloo and Brown, between mm -hmm. Tougaloo and, and uh, Boston University. Uh, that Tougaloo has ex explicit strength in the sciences, particularly in the health sciences. Mm -hmm. why, why do you think that that people know it? Because obviously the, the, the university is, 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 the college is here and thriving and people mm -hmm. take advantage of those partnerships and go on to wonderful careers. Mm -hmm. But what is it that that you think that has has a, allowed that to remain such a such a powerful thing that not too many people know about? Well, Jared, I always say that Tougaloo College has been extremely blessed with great faculty. Great faculty really make great colleges. Mm -hmm. The faculty from, it, from, from its inceptions have approached teaching broadly and they've been committed to the ideals of education. And intellectualism and idealism have really been the drivers of Tougaloo education so that we instill in the students that they can become anything that they dream of as long as they're willing to prepare themselves. Mm -hmm. So long before the nation issued the alarm that America would uh, lag behind if we if uh, institutions did not start sending more students to graduate school in STEM. Tougaloo was doing that back in the early 1930s and the 1950s. Through every generation, you can mm -hmm. find those people like the Dr. Edgar Smith and Dr. Uh, Deloach, you know, the Aaron Shirley's and all those people who graduated all through the line. You can go 
up, up until the 2000s with Angel Bird and so many others, Chaz Jack, Jackson, just people who come there and they go into these areas. Uh, uh, and because, first of all, Tougaloo magically gives students confidence. Mm -hmm. And that's truly important to success. And they introduce them to a broader world and expand their worldview. And, and, and that's also important. Many of our students come from Mississippi. Many of them have still, in, 20, in this 21st century, have not been on an airplane. But Tougaloo realizes that it cannot give them everything in that campus environment. So Tougaloo has branched out and formed these kind of partnerships. There were people on Tougaloo College's BOET in the uh, 50s and 60s uh, from New York who had relationships with Brown. And they thought at that time, at the really the beginning of the civil rights movement and all that expansion, that it would be great for a Ivy League college, university in the East and a small HBCU in the South to form a relationship and learn from each other. And that's how, that's the genesis of that relationship. And over the years, it has grown and expanded mm -hmm. through every president at Brown and every president at Tougaloo College. It is important for me to note though, you know, one of the things I said about the history of Tougaloo is that all the persons who came before me helped to cut the path to Tougaloo to last. And when I got there, I looked at it. I looked at the things that worked. I looked at the things that we needed to improve upon. But I looked at the rich history of Tougaloo, which wasn't foreign to me because I had been a student there. Mm -hmm. And said, let's build on the things that really work at Tougaloo. And when, we, when I was transitioning out, what I wanted to do was to give the incoming president that kind of support and space, the space to, to build her own uh, 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 plan and look at those things that will work at Tougaloo and be of assistance and not get in the way. I think I publicly said that I would I would give my support and send my money without being asked, but I would also wait to be asked for advice. I would not be there on that campus interfering with the work because we have to be supportive without getting in the way. And that's what I think I, I, I've tried to do with uh, President Walters and, and she has my number and whenever she calls me, I respond. And if I can be helpful, I want to do that because uh, it's not about, this institution has to continue and you don't stop and start over. You got to find those smooth patches where you can just continue. And but for President Walters to succeed at Tougaloo College means that Tougaloo College will succeed. And that's what supporters and alumni and everyone must keep in focus that it's about the institution always and that mm -hmm. all of us come and go. But it's about the institution and we do the best that we can while we're there to make these institutions stronger. And, that, and that's an interesting point, Dr. Walters, because typically it's it's tough to follow a long standing president. <laughs> um, and the it, number one problem than, it's more than tough. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems that that the, I wouldn't say difficulty. I would say um, the, 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 the the opportunity almost to do that because you guys are, are working together uh, and you are continuing a lot of what makes Tulu so great. Um, mm -hmm. How has that transition been for you? Um, because a lot of presidents get get ran over by you ain't the last person problem, but it doesn't yeah. seem at least from the outside that, that that is the case. That well, you know, th this is what's so interesting. Um, I came to Mississippi. I, I'm a New Orleanian, and I uh, started working in Mississippi in 2012. And uh, one of the first persons I learned about was Dr. Hogan uh, as a black female. If you know you're trying to move up into this field, you're going to look at others who are doing it well. And mm -hmm. so I met her at a conference for women here uh, in New Orleans. And, and when I came here to start working, I told her, I said, you know, I, I've literally been stalking you. You probably didn't even know that. So I've um, admired her from afar. Uh, and then of course, when you come in and you're trying to understand your role, uh, you do get engaged in some things that is not very comfortable for you. And I think that what Dr. Hogan and I have had to always have is transparency and trust. And I feel like I can go to her and talk about any challenge and she will advise me. And I've, I've, I've just done that. And, you know, I'll call her and if she's not available, she calls me back. I text her and, you know, and we just go from there. And not, not long ago, I said, you know, how can we get to some of these uh, donors that are friends of yours? Because this is just one uh, donor that's that's a friend of Dr. Hogan. She has many. And we've been <laughs> working 
to, uh, we want to connect to them. And so I called her about that because, because I need that. I need her uh, relationships that she's built over the years. I need those people to know that Tougaloo is still a, a worthy investment. And, and this has paid off by, by doing that, you know, to, to have the uh, Wallace teens give this gift. So I support her in her endeavors and she's supporting me. Um, it does help to know that she uh, will take my calls and, and won't avoid me and things like that. So I feel very comfortable doing it. What's the, what does the future look like for Tougaloo? Because again, th as bad of a time as 2020 <laughs> has been, um, it's very propitious, it seems, for HBCUs. Enrollment at several institutions is up. Giving is up. Yeah. Interest is up. So th there are positive metrics, even in the in the midst of disaster, it almost Absolutely. seems like. But at the same time, 2021 is coming. And that's when we're really going to know what what you know what what our test will be. Sure. What do you think that Tougaloo is is built, obviously built to last, but what does it take to make it built to grow or building it to grow? Um, in 20, 2021 and beyond? You know, my theme when I came in, um, it just came to my heart, preserving and advancing excellence. And that's, that's the theme that I've worked from from day one. You know, I didn't come in trying to tear down what anyone had built. I wanted to learn about what was built, what was being put in place, and then to build on that and to preserve that. And I think that's what's going to carry us forward. It's standing on all those principles and those policies and those programs and ideas that were here for very long. So we know STEM is the forefront. And so we are adding to that. We are not tearing that down. So what we're doing, we're adding environmental uh, science. And then because of our red thread of social justice, we've added environmental justice. Mm -hmm. We started a, a center, you know, Dr. Hogan did this when she was here. She had a social justice center. We're building on that. It's the Ruben V. Anderson Social Justice Institute. And because of the, the, the challenges we're facing today in America, people want to invest in that. So the Mellon Foundation gave us a $500,000 grant to do social justice uh, programs. So we are putting all of those programs into one center or, and they're going to be our pre-law program, which is very well known, our public policy program, and we've added leadership development because we know at Tougaloo we are growing leaders. And Dr. Hogan mentioned that about building self-esteem. But we want students to understand and as the, it, it's not just enough to protest, but we have to have some action behind that with voting. We have to teach others about that, teach others about, you know, affect policy. And so the policy program is supported by um, a, a, an endowment that we're very proud of uh, with Attorney General Eric Holder, uh, who is supporting that endowment with uh, $250,000. So we are, uh, you know, we're raising those, those dollars right now. And then uh, USDA is part partnering it with us. We have our Congressman Benny Thompson, who's uh, responsible for us making sure we have a very nice, very good, strong partnership with USDA and all corn state. Uh, we just signed a, a, another wonderful agreement, a collaborative agreement with UCLA. Uh, that program, we're trying to model it after the Brown program. Our students will be able to go to UCLA in the summers with no tuition. So, you know, we're just ecstatic about where we're going. The future of Tougaloo is very bright. And I say to the students every time I talk with them, the road from Tougaloo College can take you anywhere you want to go. And so these partnerships are very, very important. We're working on our cybersecurity program. We have a cybersecurity advisory team that consists of Amazon Web Services and Deloitte and USC and Mississippi State. Uh, so we're, we're thrilled at the future of Tougaloo College. And we think that uh, we're going to really build on something that's already historic, already prominent. And uh, Dr. Hogan, we are number 14. We're trying to get into the top 10 of HBCUs. So we're excited about where we're going. The future is so bright, I need sunglasses. 
<laughs> and, and then the last question is, is easy for you, Dr. Hogan, um, as an alumna, you know, to transition into an, an advocacy role, uh, obviously because you love the institution um, and you've seen what the inside and the outside of it looks like. But what does what does retirement look like uh, in in serving or fulfilling that role, but knowing like I'm a president. I know how to move these people. <laughs> I know how to get this. Money. How, do you, how do you do that without without the, the president in you being presidential? Is it just Beverly Tougaloo College alumna? Well, it is just Beverly Tougaloo College alumna. I, I, I'm always reminded that I I do hold the honorific title of president emerita, but that's uh, and it's easy because I've transitioned out of many different careers uh, into higher education. And one of the things that I do is I take the value of what I've learned and, and the memories that I cherish. I was ready to retire, so I'm enjoying retirement. And I I have time now to, to give back in different kinds of ways to many things that are important to me. And there's nothing more important to me that has the list to Blue College. But I am thankful that I know how to be Beverly and not President Beverly Hogan. And I think that Dr. <laughs> Dr. Walters attests to it that it's not because I don't love the institution, but I am rarely on that campus. <laughs> Yeah. I don't have an office. I don't come out to do research. I don't do any of those things. I come back to special kinds of things to support the administration, to support the students, and to be a part of um, the community I value and love so much. 